Welcome back to The Big Idea. We're on the road map tonight, and we're about to throw away all inhibitions. Okay, remember that great line from Risky Business? Sometimes you just got to say what the... Uh. Okay, for everyone watching tonight, at some point in your life, maybe right now, you felt that nagging need to file a convention when really you should be saying, what the... Uh. Let me tell you. Go ahead. Say it. Do something crazy. Because when you get that juice flowing, something big is bound to happen, and I got the perfect guest to inspire you. She's the freest of free spirits in all fashion, Betsy Johnson. How many of the world's top fashion designers do you see cartwheeling down the catwalk? Probably just one, Betsy Johnson. And her clothes are a perfect match for her personality. Fun, energetic, and more than just a little rowdy. After more than 40 years in the industry, the Betsy Johnson brand is a global empire with around $200 million a year in sales, according to the company. Fashion designer, Betsy Johnson. How you doing, kid? Hi. Hi. <laughs> okay. I feel, oh my God, can I hold up to half of you, Donnie? Yes, you can. You know, I'll, I don't tell, know. You, I'll tell you why I'm so excited to have you, because you are Thanks. the Thank living, you. breathing embodiment of somebody, their entire career, that said, I don't care what people think. Duh. Yeah. I don't care the way it's supposed to be. What the, mm, I'm doing it my mm -hmm. way. You're making millions. <laughs> I say that mm, a little bit too much <laughs> in the old Garmento business. You now, you have 50 Betsy Johnson stores. It's an incredible brand. It's a multi-million yeah. wow. dollar empire. The thing that you have to teach here tonight that I want to get to yeah. is that all along, even in the fashion business, when styles were this way, you saw punkies. You, you basically, you're designing, I don't care. I'm gonna do what's right, I'm gonna dress the way I wanna do it, I'm gonna do cartwheels when I wanna do it. Mom, uh, remember, I mean, yeah, go ahead. That's somebody who's like. Sounds I like I'm very positive. Um, oh, there's my little granddaughter. Oh, positive. Okay. Um, what you want? Oh, I, you go like this, you go like this. No, and but you what, can't where's the courage? Help where's the courage to say, because a lot of people Courages. either have, wait, let me finish, either have ideas or they wanna do it a certain way, but they think they have to do it one way. Look at you, you're doing, you're doing a cartwheel. That is the ultimate metaphor for what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's how, do you, how do you get that out of people? How do you encourage people to say, I you just, know, whatever I your thing is. I was so excited after a show eight years ago, I threw a cartwheel, because I could always do acrobatics. So uh, I thought that they liked that, I liked that. It was a fun way to express how happy I was that I thought the show was great. But I think you just can't help yourself, and you have to have blinders. You have to be like the horse in Central Park. You, for me, I was just, I lived on the Bowery and I didn't see the bums. I mean, I just, I had this full speed ahead belief that, and that's why I came to New York because I could find out real fast if I could make my ideas work with no money and no connections and no lunches and no anything and way too short and way too fat to be in the fashion industry. But I did, I just was kind of dumb about it. My spirit was, always in you know saturday football cheerleading mode and i like to make things i just have to make things and um and then i just kept very self-centered <laughs> um competitive and the, my biggest competition was myself i worked for killer companies for 10 years just two major ones i freelanced for about two years for so about 12 companies. And um, I realized I had to go on my own because I knew everyone else would fly and then crash and fly and crash, just a matter of time. And then I realized I did a bare aspirin commercial and signed it away to uh, What do you mean you did a bare aspirin commercial? Well, I made $10,000 well, in an, an hour, actress? one afternoon, yeah, over in, like in a that. film studio, and well, this want to really date me. This was a promotion for Bear Aspirin that Lee Trevino did. Ozzy Nelson, you wow. don't even know Ozzy. Ozzy Nelson. and Harriet, come on. Ozzy did. Right, wow. And I earned ten thousand. I signed I it away it. at a club at night to a Wall Street guy, oh, that's and it, it quadruple, flipple, dippled. So I had eighty thousand met by the bank, matched by the bank, in cahoots with my dear friend and partner Chantal. And we did it. And when it's your own money, you do it. You don't, <laughs> you don't quit. You're extra, extra panicked because it's your own money from your own pocket. And that keeps you cracking. Mm -hmm. 
and living through the wonderful ups and the wonderful downs. There was at one moment where you said, obviously you put a few dollars together, you give the one, because there's a lot of people either in jobs right now or doing, and they just, give me that one, you jumped, you jumped at the deep end of the pool, you held your nose, what was that one moment where you said, I'm going for it, what the hell? I don't know, uh, well, Stuart Chrysler, he was a big boy, and then he told me, and maybe people told me before, but what really hit home was when he said, if you want to do what you want, you have to pay for it. And I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> really? You know, um, so that was like the intellectual knowing that I had to front the yeah. frivolity. I love it. Um, I knew business because I w had my own dancing school in high school. So I knew, you know, how to do the basics. And I, I just, it was just time. Um, you just knew it. Now, I, I just you... knew it. Punk was happening again. I mean, but I really just knew it. I had 10 years of the old way. Right. And I knew that one day it would hit where I would feel confident enough, right. ballsy enough. Um, I felt I had company because Blondie and the Ramones and the Sex Pistols were kicking again after living through the working women's wardrobe, which was when I... Semi-retired. Yeah. Let me ask you, your, your dress, right? You're a woman who, is it fair to say you're over 40? <laughs> okay. Happy birthday. I like to tell my age. What is your I'm age? I'm going to be 65 August okay. 10th. That is incredible. You fought breast cancer. Yep. The moment you find out, I got breast cancer, where <sighs> obviously you don't roll into a ball, how do you, where was the strength to say, I'm going to beat it, I'm going to do it, what the hell? I me. had come from my doctor... I had these boobs in, and one deflated, and then I took them out, and then I found in the healing process an extra little mm -hmm. bump oh. next to this. Long story short, I found out the, that, yes, it's breast cancer. At my doctor's, that was at just the last appointment before going back to my showroom, opening the doors to our annual Halloween party. It mm -hmm. was October 31st. And everyone knew I was having this checkup. And in that taxi ride going from the doctor's office to hosting our fun company over the top Halloween party, I had to decide, I'm going to lie. I'm going to be an actress and I'm going to lie because I can't deal with the everyday public. How are you feeling? Yep, right. yep, yep. So I walked in and everyone said, yeah, negative or positive? And I'm like, negative. And I just went through the party. It's very brave. Loving every second, thinking I'll never see this party again. I'm going to die, who knows, maybe tomorrow, and I'm only going to tell my daughter. And I'll figure out how to talk about it later. And through my CFDA design club, the tents, mm -hmm. I got the opportunity to take the microphone in front of all the opening press of Fashion Week. And tell my story, so boom, and I was over it. It took yeah. me six months, so. Well, you're an inspiration. You're somebody <laughs> who says, sometimes you got to say, what the, mm, I'm doing it my way, Absolutely. screw the highway. I love that That's word. That's your pleasure. You're a babe also. <laughs> Thank you, Donnie. Fashion Thank designer, you. Fashion designer, Betsy Johnson. Okay, <laughs> we're back on the roadmap in two minutes. I want to get babe. you pumped up to follow your dream. Just a, like this gorgeous creature here, more big babe. ideas straight ahead.